What? Are you serious? Google Analytics can be wrong? I know, that's my exact reaction. We're talking about six ways that I can commonly see this happen. Okay, number one, your average session duration. When you first log in, your average session duration is low, artificially low. So what the heck, I know. Bounce rate, that is the villain. What happens when somebody comes to just one page of your site, right? They go, look around, say, no, this is not for me, and leave, zero seconds are recorded. Doesn't matter if they spend 30 seconds, doesn't matter if they spend 10 minutes studying that single page of content. If they only go to one page, boom, gone. Super frustrating, especially because they then factor those zeros into your overall count, which means it's artificially low. Crazy. Some solutions to counteract this. First, what you can do is use a segment and just segment out, segments are kind of like wearing rose colored glasses, you look at all of your data, just segment out the people uh, that are non-bounce visits, the people that looked at more than one page to get a more accurate, and this will be a higher average time on site. What's more, when you're looking at individual pages, so you're in behavior, you're looking at the different pages on your site, the time on page actually is much more accurate. That's not factoring in zeros. Don't ask me why, I don't know, but I'm just telling you. Uh, and finally, this is like advanced pro tip stuff. Uh, if you implement Google Tag Manager, you can put an event tracking code on your site that's kind of like waiting with a timer. And so after say 15 seconds, it will trigger if the session is still active. Those are some quick tips on dealing with that one. Number two, your organic search, that's the total traffic people type and stuff into Google, your organic search numbers may be artificially high, especially if you're more of a brand name. So uh, let's take Whole Whale for instance. My mom, typically, thanks mom, types in Whole Whale into Google to then find my site. So what happens is the keyword Whole Whale is technically recorded as one of the organic keywords, but that's not really the essence of organic. That's more about direct traffic. Somebody who already knows you, types you into the main bar, goes directly to your site. So solutions. So aside from you know calling up every single person who is you know typing your search terms into Google, which is not that effective, uh, though I could technically go call mom. Hey mom, stop doing that. What you can do is go into your channel settings and set it so that anytime for us whole whale is searched for as a keyword, it actually redirects that and counts it as direct traffic trying to put people where they belong. Direct traffic, in general, great indicator for people that know you by name and kind of seek you out on a regular basis. Number three, since I'm ragging on organic traffic, might as well talk about the dreaded keyword, not set. In case you're wondering, uh, probably, I'm willing to bet, 60 to 70% of your overall organic keywords show up as not set. Now, that doesn't mean that people are typing in not set and you show up. Hopefully you haven't been acting under that information because it's wrong. Not set literally means that it's being blocked by the privacy policies of Google. I know, weird, Google actually paying attention to your privacy, but that's true. Using Chrome, things that I type in when I'm logged into Gmail, that uh, I type in keywords and they actually are uh, hidden from the, the general Google Analytics. And so it can be really crazy that you're only looking at about 30% of the actual keywords that you see, so you kind of have to inflate those numbers. So the solution here, right, dealing with the keyword not provided, we have some options, right? One is we have to take a grain of salt to the fact that when we filter that out, we just look at the remaining keywords and then we have to sort of inflate those by, um, by the range there, which is like a rough estimation, not that great. Some of the things you can actually do is use the not provided, add that as a segment and then look at your landing pages and then sort of reverse engineer what are the top keywords related to the landing pages. Landing pages being the pages that people first land on your site for. So it's kind of like if I type something into Google like um, staying with Google Analytics may be wrong. And we see that this page is up there. Some of those are gonna be not provided, but if I can see that my top landing pages is my Google Analytics may be wrong article, I'm like, I wonder what brought them there. And I can then kind of backward map a lot of those in there. The other solution that I really love is making sure that Google Webmaster Tools is connected to your analytics account. Google Webmaster Tools is giving you the view from the Google bot perspective. And it will actually pull in the search volume and impressions, not all the way down to the click, but like gives you general information about the keywords that you're ranking for, how many people are clicking through, and the total impressions, really helpful for SEO. Number four, double counting users. Your user count may be a little bit inflated because we're dealing with cookies. Cookies 
are ultimately how Google's telling all this creepy stuff about you. Think about a cookie as a little shopping bag that chases you around the internet, right? Gathering up all of your interactions. So, you know, I go to buy my coffee in the morning, I swipe my Metro card, all of these little interactions are being stored as cookies, all saved. Uh, when I get to Google Analytics, a page, a site with Google Analytics on it, it's like, hey, what you got in that bag? It takes out and is able to find out all this information about you. And what's more, adds in a couple more cookies. And that's how we can tell new versus returning users and also uh, this saves uh, not only for the session but for up to two years unless of course you dump your cookies clear your cache um, and browsing history then if you go back again and again and you keep clearing your browsing history and you're not saving that cookie that Google gave you it's like I guess this person is new this also happens when you're jumping between devices so some solutions now that you know that that number may be a little bit off uh, there's something more advanced that you can actually implement called user ID tracking that, especially if you have a site where you log in, you're going to be installing an extra bit of code that allows user ID tracking paired up with a unique user and their behavior. It might be helpful to use sessions. Now sessions, what we're dealing with is, it doesn't matter that it was like the unique user, it was like I came and just had breakfast and I ate three plates. The analogy here is that with sessions, it's like a meal. So I had a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, three sessions. But inside of that, I can have multiple page views. So if I'm counting these sessions, it's like, okay, someone came, interacted with my site for this period of time, and that's gonna be uh, unique every time. Number five, my user counts don't add up. What the heck? So here's the funny thing. Users, right, they're trying, formerly unique visitors, they're trying to make sure that they're unique based on the time frame, and this is key. So let's say, hypothetically, I am creating a month by month by month by month by month user count. So every month I go into analytics and I tally, all right, how many users did I have this month? I had 300, next month 300, 500, whatever, and I save them each time because I, that's how I did the search parameters. Then at the end of the year, as I'm just, you know, tallying up my average uh, users per month, uh, as I'm probably being asked, and I actually just query the entire year altogether, my user number is so much lower. I'm like, what the heck happened? So remember, users are trying to be unique based on those cookies. So in that time frame, Google's like, no, that's how many users that we could tell that were unique. Solution, don't freaking do that. <laughs> No, but seriously, just understand what users are trying to do is trying to find those unique people based on the time frame. So don't get caught up in that time frame game. Number six, my numbers keep changing, right? So maybe you go in and you're like, you're querying something and you write it down and then you come back and it's different. You're like, what? Here's the case where that might happen. Let's say you're checking out, I don't know, yesterday's data because you're you know manic about seeing what happened with the latest campaign. I know, probably not you, somebody else. Yesterday is not complete until later in the day. Potentially, they say 24 hours later, right? It's five o'clock somewhere. I know, I think that New York is the center of the world. In fact, it's not. So those data, especially if you're dealing with international audiences, not necessarily complete until the end of the day, fully on 24 hours later. Solution, don't do that, I know. Uh, seriously, uh, just wait a little bit. Uh, there is a hack though. Uh, if you set up a reoccurring scheduled uh, dashboard to go every single day, it'll actually trigger when the data are ready. And so usually, actually, I've found that between 4.30 and 6.30, you can get data on the previous day accurately. So final thoughts here, just you, I'm assuming have your code installed correctly, which may be an incorrect assumption. You can always be checking this in terms of real time uh, and also making sure that that code snippet is on every single page. What's more, you have to remember that about 3% of users uh, on devices, on uh, desktop especially, may have JavaScript enabled and not enabled. And what that means is that code won't even render. And so for about 3% of your audience that you're just not gonna get anything on, I still think uh, when properly installed, you have more than enough data to make actionable insight and change your strategy around. There you go, six ways Google Analytics can be wrong. Pretty crazy. But at least now you know how to avoid these common pitfalls. As always, send us comments, send us questions at uh, Apple Whale, that's a good spot for those. And if you're looking for something to subscribe to, a boom right there. Just, you know, give it a good old subscribe. And if you're not doing anything later, you know, check out this video. Go on, it's okay. I'll wait. <laughs>